So we're here today at the Valentine Variant House at 3266 Bainbridge Avenue here in the Bronx. This is the second oldest house in the Bronx. Um, and this evening we're going to do a review of first generation pioneers of graffiti writing here in the Bronx. They should both be very interesting, and this is dedicated to the memory of our dear friend, our departed friend and comrade Daniel J. Bontier, aka Dynamite 161, Dr. Soul. It should be really nice. Best man, much love and respect to Dr. Soul, my brother Danny, also known as Dynamite 161, Ted Incorporated, the still there. How are you doing? My name is FVP56, and I'm here at the show to represent. And I want to thank you all for inviting me to this nice event. Hi, uh, my name is Comet from the 2 and 5 train. So uh, uh, this is rare for me to show up, so I'm happy I'm here. Probably try to make a habit out of it one day. Uh, most of the panel, except for one individual, right, are, are, are first generation writers from the Bronx. Right? Um, so why is it important? Well, uh, there's been an evolution of what we did in the late 60s and early 70s, an evolution of it, and the evolution of it seems to like almost like go against what originally happened in the late 60s and early 70s. And it's become a, a commodity, and those are, are, are trailblazers these trailblazers, right? These uh, pioneers uh, really don't get the acknowledgement and the, and the recognition for what they uh, contributed to the art form, right? Um, I would say uh, to, um, to expound on that or to, uh, or to uh, confirm that, there was a, 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 a something that was on GMA. Uh, uh, GMA three, right? Um, and uh, Tuesday, and um, the caption was uh, the first lady of graffiti, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so that kind of like you know confirmed that yeah, I I needed to, to do this. Uh, we we needed we needed to to do this. All right. Um. So um. The actual first lady is not here yet, but she's on her way, right? Um, not the one that, you know, was on GMA Tuesday, right? Okay, so uh, I'm just saying, you know, that's a, that's something we have to deal with. I got a question. Who was it on GMA? What's the lady? Uh, I don't like to mention names. Oh, okay, okay. Right? But, but, there you go. Okay, okay you somebody said. Say. All right? You don't have to okay, so you I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, okay, so uh, for, uh, for, with a raise of hands, who, 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 who believed that lady on uh, Tuesday was the first lady of uh, okay. no, 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 no. All right, but uh, I think that it was incumbent upon her to, to say, no, uh, you know, I'm, I, uh, I am not the first lady. I, I, I am. Uh, would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, well. <clears throat> yeah, I, I heard her actually say that in the film. Yeah. 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 Say, I, okay. I was not oh, the first say that? Okay. Okay, she thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, but um, it's it's being propagated, and uh, I don't think it's it's fair to uh, uh, one of the first ladies, the original first ladies. Okay. So, um, um, it's Bay not so much, Queenie, this is not. Barbara, Eva, and Michelle. Michelle, right. right. This is not so much about uh, um, Danny Bontier, God rest his soul, but it is in memory of, of Dr. Soul One, right? Uh, uh, also known as um, Dynamite 161, who mm -hmm. recently deceased. Right? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But this definitely is in memory of Dr. Soul, right? Um, and. Um, also, uh, Tracy 168, yes. right? Tracy 168, right? Uh, uh, Page 2, yeah. right? Uh, Stan 153, yeah. uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Now, now, now. 
Who? Dell from the Fabulous Five. Okay. Yeah. Anybody yeah. else? Yeah. 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 Oh. Marco one and two. Yeah. Who else? Lee one sixty third. Lee one sixty third. Who else? So 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 what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that our generation is slowly dying out. Right, and and we have to acknowledge, um, the, um, those that are are still here, and and those that are gone. All right, um. So late 60s, early 70s here in New York and South Philly, kids between the ages of 8 and 16, that's very important. Kids between the ages of 8 and 16 started tagging with spray paint, right? Spray paint. Now, the uh, significance of that, the little ones. The significance of that, right? You know, we know this brand here, and we know that brand there, Cryon. And that other brand over there, Red Devil, right? Um, the significance of that is that spray paint was invented in 1949 in Illinois by a guy with my name, Edward. He ran a, a paint company by the name of Seymour Paint Company. So Edward Seymour in 1949 uh, put spray paint in a can. He didn't invent the canister. The canister was invented in the Netherlands. The canister, aerosol canisters was invented in the Netherlands. What Edward Seymour did is that he um, put it paint in the canister, right? And it came on the market in the early 50s as a utility tool. I say utility tool to paint cars, yeah. paint bicycles, lawn furniture, yep. right? Industrial use, nothing to do what Train. we used it for right? in the late 60s, early 70s. And that is the tag wood. All right? That's a significant thing to me, right? Because what happened, what we were doing was co-opted by the mainstream art world, right? Um, which we, we refer to as can control, the ability to use spray paint to write and draw away. It was co-opted by the, uh, the mainstream art world. And around the late 70s, early 80s, right? Uh, and uh, that's why I have this gentleman here, Al Diaz, right? Because one of the one of the important figures in that was a guy named Basquiat, right? Which I saw in about 1979. I was working down on Spring Street, and uh, I saw a guy using spray paint to write with. So I approached him and I said, "Yo, what just what's your tag?" And he said, "I don't have a tag, right?" I said, "You don't have a tag? What, what are you doing?" I mean, but that's all I saw was somebody with spray paint, and he was writing. He was writing, right? Writing. <laughs> All right. So we know we got different names for it, tagging, hitting, writing, that <laughs> right? Uh, um, um, but um, he was writing, right, with spray paint. And, um, but he was doing his own thing with it, and that was the earliest dude I seen like doing something other than tagging with spray paint on the street, right? Uh, so uh, we're gonna get to uh, Mr. Al Diaz eventually, and he's gonna give us a little insight on what happened with that. All right. So um, we'll start with a little uh, video commemoration of Doctor Soul. Staff Agent Topaz was one of the one of the famous people in the group. Along came a guy called Super Slick, which was the vice president of the Ebony Dukes. We got along very good, and we got to know a lot of people in the graffiti world. Today we are doing graffiti interviews, and 
We are establishing our name here and around the world. Cut it. Denmark. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet Danny aka Dr. Soul in 2014 in New York where we did uh, a reunion for the Ebony Dukes. Uh, Danny was the only original member uh, coming out for the event. Uh, I was simply an eighth of, of meeting a legend like, like him. Uh, at that time Danny hadn't been painting graffiti for I would say about 40 years. Uh, and he was getting right back into it like he had never left. He did a beautiful, funky piece, and uh, a lot of the legends of the New York graffiti scene they passed through Tough City to to meet and pay their respect to to the great doctor, Doctor Soul. And uh, now I know that they usually say that. You shouldn't meet your heroes, but in this case, I'm really glad I met Danny. He was a super nice, humble dude. Um, yeah, the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Rest in peace, Danny. Here. Um, I, I grew up with him. I knew him since I was like 10 years old. Right? Um, uh, uh, a great personality. Uh, he had this, uh, uh, you know, amazing sense of humor. Right? Um, first generation guy, uh, one of the original seven members of the Every Duke crew. First writing crew in the Bronx. Um, the only crew. That I seen that was active during that time. Who, any ex vandals here? No ex vandals here. There's no ex vandals here. Okay, so, okay, so, um, yeah, so, so, uh, Dr. Soul, Dr. Soul Mark. Right. Now, here's the thing with that, right? Here's the thing with, with everything, with writing and everything. So late 60s, early 70s, right? Uh, here in New York, right? Specifically in the Bronx. The Bronx is known as the birthplace of hip-hop culture. During that um, the late 60s, early 70s, uh, I, was, I, I was part of a, a street gang, right? in the Port Apache section of the South Bronx, right? The, the Port Apache section of the South Bronx had the largest concentration of street gangs in the city at that time. One of the most notorious slums ever in the history of New York, right? Um, that's where I live. Right around the corner from there was the headquarters, right up on 67th Street, up on the hill, right, um, of the Ghetto Brothers, right? 62nd. Huh? On 62nd. Yeah. Yeah, right? Um, so the next speaker here, uh, what I'm saying to you is that with all the chaos and confusion that was of the Fort Apache section of the South Bronx, the South Bronx in general, right? Um, um, something happened 
right? That opened the way for what we now know as hip hop culture that began. I'm not saying writing. Writing was there, always was, always was there, before the term hip hop <clears throat> came about. But the other things, the break dancing and the MCing and DJing, right? Those things came together along with the writing after a certain situation happened. And so that, with that, I'm going to introduce the next speaker, which is Ebony Stoke Roman, right? Who is the vice president of the Ghetto Brothers. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, it was a it was a wing. It was a flying wing. Uh, the story with that is we were doing uh we were downtown the Lower East Side one time, moving a friend of mine, right? So Remember, we are 15, 16, 14 years old, okay? So we move in, we move in. At that time, I was vice president of the Ghetto Brothers because Kelly had been taken away. So we were moving. We had a chain going on with our colors on, right? And around the corner turned the Hells Angels. Third Street, First Avenue. Up that way, yeah. And, I'm, and I say, oh, shit. So I tell you, oh, Ben, you know, Ben, you know. So they're walking towards us now. Because they see we got red and white, and we had a flying wing. There was a flying wing. So they seen we were kids. They got along. We we had a nice talk. They said, you can keep those colors, but you got to get rid of the wing. Mm -hmm. So then it, 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 it was between the garbage can and the fist. Because as Emmanuel reminded me, which he's also a ghetto brother. Reminded me that Yellow Benji wanted a fish. Yep. Right? He wanted a fish. That's why in our modern colors now we have a fish. Right? So what happened with that was we had to go with the garbage can, which actually fitted the name Ghetto Brothers more. People <laughs> liked it more. People, you know, the ghetto man. I heard somebody somewhere somebody say, no, that the that we are uptown and because he told his brothers, now nah, we're ghetto brothers. No, but the real ghetto was the low east side from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, they were back in the 30s and 40s, it was really bad out there, you know. So for people to say that we, the South Bronx is actually the first ghetto, it's not true. No. Not true at all. Now, <clears throat> what happened is we had a lot of things going on. We had a food program going. We had a sweet pea campaign going. We had uh, martial arts classes. We had the Black Panthers by coming by educating us. We had the Young Lords coming by educating us. Right? And everything came to be. Now, I happened to take a chance and make a meet. I made a meeting to, with the uh, Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. Right? And then I come in that in meeting. I actually took a shot. I said, we offer, we know we have a center, you know, uh, but we have no equipment, we have no nothing. A week and a half later, a car, a white truck showed up in front of the headquarters, and they, they asked for me. I went out, I signed, and a bunch of a pool table came out, came on table, stereo, TV, chairs, all kind of recreational equipment. So my effort worked. Now what happened was, I was actually taking these colors off, right? Because we had a center going on. I said, let's have IDs, because too many people were coming in and out. I was talking to Pops. He said, I need to play pool there. I said, well, guess who got you that pool table? I did. So you have to know me. Yeah, just that I haven't changed. I haven't just, you know. But in any event, we had it going on. Now, I felt this was a stigma, you know. So at one point, Durell Rivera interviewed me, and I said, and I said, we are not a hostile group. Because the cops didn't mess with the ghetto brothers, because they knew we were about peace, right? So what happened was, 
I took a barrette and barrette of fatigue. Color started coming off. What happened was, one day, we went sent, I was like this, addressing the ghetto brothers and ghetto sisters, not property of, because a lot of clubs have property of, if they're females, they were property of. Not the ghetto brothers, they were ghetto sisters. They had their own president, their own vice president, the whole, the whole thing, right? We gave them that much respect. And we have baby ghetto brothers, which in turn, a lot of them turn to be broken teams, right? So what happened, um, Playboy runs in one day, and he says, there's some guys coming down on the six Street. And they looks like they're looking for trouble. So I said, okay, I started out with some. Now I had already, all I had was a red with a red star and my army long jacket. I was gonna go, Black Benji stopped me from going. So when Black Benji stopped me from going, he said, no, you stay here addressing the ghetto brothers and the ghetto sisters. And I find out what was going on. Because at, by that point, I had taken off Warlord. I had taken off all those names that were associated with Trigger. I said, no, the ghetto brothers staff. We got ghetto brothers security. This is, we have the department heads of service there. That's the way I was going on it. Right? So he was security. That, uh, that Benji took care of us a lot. You know, he, was, he always was up front and center in rumbles and things like that, right? He, he decided to go. About 20 minutes later, 15 minutes later, they were right back in, they jumped him. They jumped him. Now, I don't understand why this wasn't said when they, anyway, that's a different story, which I get angry about. Um, so you know they, they put the street name they have a street name after the Black Benji, right? Okay. And nobody actually gave the story. So, when he came, they dropped it because he still thought they had to come with that. So he probably, when he went to, to, to down, he, he went to stop the fight. You know, he went to stop it. And they actually jumped it. Right? That, when he, they turned around, it must have been when he hit the floor and they seen the ghetto brothers and they started running. 163rd Street, those who know. 162nd, Stevens Avenue. It used to be Stevens Avenue, not Reverend Blight. 163rd Street, Westchester. Right? Right there, that's a crossroad. They had no they, they had no okay, they had no cell phones back then, right? Within half an hour, the Black Falcons got to work. A lot of people came, a lot of gangs came to support us. Fort Apache was on Simpson. Sergeant Martinez begged us not to fight, right? And because of his mother, we made that decision not to fight at that moment. It was actually that shortly after that. What, what was happening was the Ghetto Brothers had a, there's a Ghetto Brothers gang and there's a Ghetto Brothers band. Now, Benji and them started playing in a lot of schoolyards, right? And so after that peace treaty, then we, there was peace for a while. The younger kids wanted to continue to fight. But within that range, the Ghetto Brothers band was out there playing in different schoolyards. Right? And there was no more that we're going to fight against you. It's about now we're going to dance against you. You know? The best dancer, the best, you know. And that's the way it came out. The Peace Treaty was a, 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 a springboard. A springboard to what came after, which was Hitler, which was, I remember tagging, I didn't even know I was tagging, I used to put the baby maker here, I used to do this, I changed my name so many times. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> right here in Clinton, when I used to come by, nah, I put that shit out the baby maker, <laughs> trying to tag me the markers and shit, I didn't know what I was doing. But in any event, the peace treaty, allow the opportunity for people to actually get together and do something different. And along with that was the Ghetto Brothers Band. And a lot of places they give credit to the Ghetto Brothers as pioneers of hip hop. Read it in a lot of magazines. Okay? 
tagging was always around because I remember that wall behind the church, like I mentioned last when we had the event, right? It was always tagged. And I, I asked Stab, I wonder who tagged it. Because Stab lives right there. You know, so he probably had a nice big canvas, right? <laughs> I tell you, because it's a big church, it's a big boy, and it was always tagged. Always tagged. That was a Hewitt place. My grandpa was at Hewitt place, right? Yeah, Hewitt place. Yeah, yeah, straight into a club called Three Ten and a Half that became a place to dance to. And anyway, I just wanted to say that the Ghetto Brothers don't get the credit that they should be getting. A lot of people are stealing the credit, especially people that never even were, was there. They had nothing to do with our lifestyle because the native New Yorker is dying out. True, yeah. The native New Yorker is dying out. So now all these people are taking these stories and making them their own. Because I also have seen something about people from Brooklyn saying that they were the first. All right, so this is the meat, meat of uh, what we're going to do, right? We had two places that we kind of met up at. When I said we, right, uh, right, it's, right? 149th Street in Grand Concourse and WC 188. Anybody from WC 188 here? Yeah, right, right. Okay, okay. So, okay. So, oh, those are two places that we met up at. And so that's why, you know, I kind of like, yeah, you know, threw that together, right? Um, I never saw Mike, I never saw you at, at, at 149th Street, and I never saw you at 149th Street. I was a maybe, that's All right, and, and I never <laughs> saw you at 149th Street, all right? Because you guys had your own... Corner. You know, right this corner is like a meeting place. But, yeah, but, 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 but I know when I met Mike years ago, they used to be at 168 Street and Broadway. Yep. Yeah, I know one. Uh, I got to meet Pinky there, yeah, yeah. 136. That's where, I just want to cut you off in that. That's where the, the young, the young, uh, what are they, the young gang, yeah, yeah, they, they, they robbed they my golf club, club off me. I saw the H137 there. I saw that. I, I, I didn't mean to stop. I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but that was the end of the meeting around your man. That, yeah, that's like a, a writing bench. Yeah, right there. Right so, there. Yeah. so here's the thing, right? I'm going to start from this side and come down. Um. How are you doing? Okay. So, uh, when did you start writing? 71. 1971. And what was your main tag? Riff 170. Why did you write Riff 170? Why? Because uh, Chris and Bonanza said I had to get something that fits me. Yeah. And I was always reading comic books or newspaper or something. And they, there's like a commercial came on TV reading this fundamentally. Fundamentally. Yes. Okay. Okay, so, um, wasn't that with a door? 1971? Yes. And, and you wrote Riff 170. Yes. Where was you living at, at, at that time? Um, 170 from Plimpton Avenue. Where is that at? Up in the Bronx. In the Bronx. How old were you at that time? 11 when I started. 11 years old. When did you start writing? Uh, 1974. 1974. Right, well, so. I'm second generation. Uh, I ain't gonna well, sit around here. Doesn't I'm back with your guys. Does it matter? Does it matter? You started writing in 1974. What was your main what was your main tag? What was your main tag? Uh my main tag was chain three. And uh, why did you write chain three? Uh it just had uh it was just the art of the hit. Uh I I liked from a, a person that was in my class and his name was uh uh Tony Tone. Uh, his name is Angelo, but he didn't go by the name of Tony Tone. Uh, he's from the Cold Crush Brothers, and uh, I was in a bathroom at one time, and I was looking 
that these guys that had a book, it was called the BKW, these guys that hit around the school. And they had, uh, you know, this big book, and they was looking at it, and I was looking at it. When I stuck my head over to look and peek at it, they slammed the book on me. And I asked, you know, this guy, uh, Tony, Tony Tone, I said, you know, what was this all about? What were they doing or whatever? I said, oh, those guys were writers or whatever. So he was showing me, and little did I know my whole class of things was writing and whatnot, <laughs> and whatnot but I kind of liked his hit. Yeah. And he wrote Chain too. Yeah. So he was like, uh, had his part in Snaps 3 and uh, uh, Neil. And they just was writing from McKinley Square on Boston Road in the Bronx from uh, McKinley Square to White, uh, White Plains, uh, East Tremont. So their tags was all over the place. But they used to snap on me and say, yo, man, you keep tagging in your door. <laughs> okay. So with that, I'm going to ask you, um, where was you living at? Where was you living at back then? Okay, I was living on... on um, uh, Boston Road in Prospect Avenue. Where's that at? Uh, 170th Street. Where's that at? Uh, uh, what yeah, borough the is Bronx. it at? Oh, the Bronx. <laughs> 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 Where did you start writing? Uh, 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 when did you start writing? You know, I, I hit my first train ever with 72 with my, my shitty test mark. But me and the 56 boys, like in 71, and I went in the, not the good way the graffiti world is, you would find a paintbrush, I mean paint, and take a stick and write a FDT or boy's name, a different name and all that crap. But that's about it. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> so, what was your dad? FDT 56. Why did you write FBT 56? At Puerto Rico, I have Cuban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank Del Toro. Frank Del Toro. So it was your initials. Exactly. Yes. But what's the 56 about? I'm oh, glad you said that. Yeah. I still have 56 in the South Bronx. And I didn't want nobody to, so I didn't want nobody to know where I lived at. So I, took away, so I took away the one. But I found out that didn't work when I lived in the project. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wrote in the lobby. I never met. It was one of my people who wrote FBT 56. Lived in apartment six B. <laughs> <laughs> so I never forget the cop. No, I never forget the. We had in our day we had housing police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they came and knocked on my door. Yeah, Frank, come over here and walk me in. I had to clean the hallway, and that's about it. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> okay. Oh, would you like to know where I live? Mm -hmm. He didn't tell me what building. Where did you I live? live? I live in 156th Street, the Jackson Andrew Jackson Project, okay. between Cortland and Park Avenue, baby, South Bronx. Thank right. you. Okay. Right. When did you start writing? 1971. And what did you write? Comet. Comet One. Why did you write Comet One? Well, at least hang out with this kid, Joey Almeida, on 214th Street, right when he's little. And one day he said to me, uh, he has a dry mark in his hand. A glass one, and he got it from Woolworth to something on 217. He says, I'm right now. I said, What are you talking about? He says, uh, uh, I'm right. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. It's all this stuff on the train. I says, I says, and he says, My name is Ajax. So he says, I mean, so he says to me, You want to write? I says, I, I guess so. so. I went to Woolworth. My mother was the boss of Woolworth on 217. <laughs> <laughs> right okay, she was the boss. So I got a job there down the road, and I overstocked on the home coach. <laughs> so anyway, I went up on the Third Avenue well. For some reason, the two trains were there, but I liked the Third Avenue well because my mom used to bring me down to 149th Street to Alexander's. And there used to be a little haberdash shops there. The Jews used to have like hat stores. Of my mother had big breasts. <laughs> yeah, I got a taste of that, so don't get jealous. <laughs> the thing is, she my mother looked like uh, uh, Elizabeth Taylor or, or Wonder Woman. She was a very pretty boy, big. <clears throat> so she had to go down to 149th Street to get these bras, okay? And Moo Moo dresses. Like she used to wear Moo Moo dresses too. She had to make a sauce. <laughs> Not great, but a sauce. <laughs> so. <laughs> the first train that I went on was the Third Avenue Well on Gunner Road. Had wooden planks, two two by eights, and uh, the trains were were brown, 
and uh, the door was popped back and forth. Right? You know, I was a little kid, a little boy. And uh, so I said to my friend Ajax, I'm going to start hitting the Third Avenue. Well, I still got the first piece I got right here. On a, fe a cold night in February, I pulled forth the bank. I did my first piece. I got a picture of it. Good. And uh, from there, you know. I'm Where were you here. living at back then? Well, I was originally born on 106th Street and 2nd Avenue in Jefferson Pool over there. Yeah. First day of East Hall. Then when I was like 12 years old, I was going to the 213th Street over here. There's a lot of old farms left over. A lot of Italians over there making wine and crushing grapes and such. <laughs> Yeah, every Sunday there was like man, you can smell the sauce a mile away. And uh, so man, how old were you when you started writing? Thirteen years old. Thirteen. When did you start writing? I started writing in nineteen seventy one. <laughs> and what was you writing? I wrote Mom One and I was uh, influenced by uh, my cousin who was who was friends with Spanky one thirty two, Stitch and Snake. And he grew up in Washington Heights and, and right his corner and all that. And and I was 12 years old. I was in, I was like, oh, because I, I grew up in the Lower East Side, um, in Jacob Reese houses on Avenue D. Uh, housing. I remember one time a housing police somebody threw the inside of a, of a washing machine at it with a rubber part, knocked them out on the house. But it was that kind of a neighborhood. But um, so I was influenced by 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 him. I wanted to be like these guys because these guys had a certain swag that the dudes in the LES. There was no graffiti in the LES other than gang graffiti. And and I saw this, I was like, oh shit, this is some cool stuff. I want to be part of that. So I so as a as a result, I ended up being like the first writer in the LES in 1971, and there was no competition, so it was very visible. So okay, yeah. very interesting. I thought you had started writing. Oh, no, no, but interesting, very interesting. Very interesting. Chapter so thus far, we realize that everybody up there started writing in the 70s, right? Yeah. That's that's understood from what we got thus far. Were you ever part of a uh, of a writing crew? Yes. What writing crew were you a part of? War and X Vans. How did you become a part of that? Uh, phase two put me in. How did he put you in? He told me that. Uh, and what year did he put you in? Uh, he told me I should start writing in in seventy one when Chris and Bonanza took me up to Clint. What and year was that? That was seventy one. The ending of seventy one. Okay. What crews were you a part of? Well, there's a various. Everybody want to be down with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but um, my main crews were uh, the Death Squad. I was president in 1976. And uh, TMT, I was like a... a what does TMT guy. stand for? The Magnificent Team. Mm -hmm. 1977. So the Sam, the the, the, the Yankees, the blackout, blackout, and then and then then we came. What crews were you a part? I'm gonna tell you just three. First, I was in war. The second, I was one of the greatest writers wanted. And then, with my boy, I gotta give him my rep over there. That's Clyde King of the Busters over there. I gotta rep my boy. And then my main group, Sasa. You know. That was our crew. Salsa. Yeah. When did Salsa begin? Oh, we started that in 76. Can I say the name? Chrome 100, Game 5, Pats, and my boy Shik One, as you all know, yeah. from the Mean Machine. Right. Yeah. 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 That's all I tell you. What crews were you part of? Well, you were the one of first people. You were the first <laughs> You put me into the Ebony Dukes on, on Dunno Road. First white boy in, in the Ebony Dukes to this day. First, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you saw you saw me my first ninja, <laughs> my little ninja marker. That's when I was coming up the ranks for a dollar. Meanwhile, the train was fifteen cents, so you made up with that day. Way good that okay. night. So the, second crew, the second crew that I was in, Cliff One Fifty Nine, put me on three by three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then recently they put me in the X Vandals, but I never write it, but you know, I should. I, I don't know who put me in which recently, but anyways. Uh, the Crazy Five, you know, they were Van, Crotchy, Blade, and all those guys, you know. And, but the first group was the Ebony Dukes, and you put me in on Gun Ho Road. 
Okay. And you were the first writer I ever met. Besides Phase 2, maybe Phase 2 or Priest 167 or you, but I think it was you. I went up there and you were there, we were talking, and then I, I and you had a mark in your hand. It was a ninja, in yellow, and I bought it off you. And that was from there on, it was menacing. <laughs> from 1971 to 82, went away for four years, came out in 86, at the age of 27, went back on the trains again. <laughs> you know, crazy man. <laughs> what crew were you a part of? I, play, I wrote with soul artists for a little mi a, a minute and then the SSD right. around 76, 75. 70, 76, 75. Yeah. Okay. Um, very good. So uh, you notice that, that all these guys so far started in the 70s, mm -hmm. and all of them were part of, uh, of a writing crew. You see that, right? Okay. Uh, those things, writing crews are... are or are nothing new that just started in the 80s or 90s or 2000s. Writing crews were ongoing. The Ebony Duke started in the spring of 1970. I started that in the spring of 1970. What did you used to write with? I used to write with uh, a dry mark at first. That's the first thing I was introduced to, the glass marker yeah, with yeah. The, the tip mark. And then the L Where did you get it from? I got it from the Woolworths on Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was five and ten. It was called five and ten. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, so okay, listen up. This is very important. You got it from the on 170th Street. How much did you pay for it? I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he wanted. And that's the only thing you used was a dry mark? No, in a El Marco marker. And that's it? No, I use different markers, oh, but right. it was the cost of time. That's all you wrote with, 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 with drop the markers? Yeah. You didn't write with spray paint? Yeah, I wrote with spray paint. Did you write, you wrote with, with markers first, and then you wrote with spray paint? paint? Yeah. Okay, where did you get the spray paint from? Same place. <laughs> did you pay for it? Oh, no. <laughs> what did you start writing with? Uh, same dry bar, homemade, pin out little. Yeah. Where did you get it from? Where did you get it from? Well, a store called Dollar Juice. Did you pay for it? <laughs> How about your spray paint? Did you write with spray paint? Yes. What kind of spray paint? Uh, safe, safeguard was probably my first, my first, my first can. <laughs> Safeguard, uh, safeguard was my yeah. first, my first. Did yeah. you pay for the spray paint? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll admit, my first can I paid for. Okay, first can. After that, you know, when they taught me how to rap, they taught me, you know, I said, well, this is a new world out here. Okay, very good. Uh, I'm what, did you, what did you write with? I'm different from them. I did pay for one was the Omar Clark. I always remember the green <laughs> Omar Clark. Then came my dry mark. Yeah. Then my first can, I guess I paid for a red devil. Then my first pilot, I had to go to Tremont Avenue. And you know what it was called then? Fuji. Yeah. And that was it. Okay. Fuji. Where did you get those the, the, the spray paint from? See, I would have to say it had to be it had to be Woolworths. Okay. On Third Avenue in the Bronx. Okay. What did you start writing with? A dry mark and the little glass one. Yeah, that's true. Also got that war war because I stole it. <laughs> My mother worked it. <laughs> <laughs> then I upgraded to the ninja that you gave me. Then I got some mini wise. I used to get them on on, 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 on Fordham Road. Uh, of course, you from Alexander's old Shipping. bookstore there. Shipping. Where the Chinese guy used to own the, 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 the So I bought a mini wise. We had the screws underneath, not the new one. Yeah, the mini wise, the, the uni wise, I didn't like because stay high. You stay high would know how to work with them with the blends. <laughs> with the stuff. Yes. So I, I it's too sloppy for me. The mini wire was okay, but like I said, the first one was glass. And the first one was the one you I bought off you. Where did you get it from? What? The spray paint in the market. Oh, Woolworth, we'll that's 217. Did you pay for it? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> what did you write with? The first mark was a dry mark. Uh, and then I, 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 I stole my first uh, Niji, Niji marker from that. Hold on, we ain't stole. 
We rap, rap, he's rap. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I remember putting this shit down my sleeve. I, I broke <laughs> and then uh, we, our first cans that we stole were from Strauss stores. We skipped a little the, the car paint. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's, 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 that's the first place. one. That, and then after that, we went to, to the hallways. I, 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 I forgot about that. I got me a car paint. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah, yeah. on Fordham Road with the bro. Yeah, yeah. But can I say one thing? He said one thing too. <laughs> staff, staff, I mean, staff, I'm sorry. Staff 149. When he used to do those uni white hacks, and he showed me how to do it. He would take that uni white, and he always carried that dry mark marker. And he would pour a half of the side, no, and man. yeah, throw no, and no, no, no. So stay high, man. Okay. He was one of the first ones that did the two tone tags, man. He, he was the voice out of sight. Hello. Hey. Who's Sean? Welcome, Sean. When did you start writing? So, technically, I remember <laughs> it was the. After Christmas, December, 1969. Nice. That's how I remember it, because it was after Christmas. What did you write? Charmin 65. Why did you write Charmin 65? Because I was squeezably soft. Squeeze the shark. Yeah, right. Still squeezably soft. What did your 65 stand for? I used to live on 165th Street, but I felt like, damn, that's just too many num num letters and the numbers, so I just dropped the one. So you were living where? Uh, on 65th Street. Where is that at? Between, in the Bronx, between yeah. Hull Avenue and Thale Street. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What was you writing with? Dry mark, first thing. Just dry marks? No, that was the first one. Then came the pilots I was writing. Then I I got some uh what was that little one? It came in a you was just talking about it, but it, it came in opaque. It was oh, oh, opaque oh, yes. oh, yeah, yeah. I used to do the windows. Pentel, yeah. Pentel, yeah. Pentel. 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 Yeah. Rack them out. There we go. Charming 65, folks. Bettina Bontier, Dr. Soul's little sister. Very good. So we got a few things established here, right? We got a few things established here. Everybody here started at least in the late 60s, early 70s. Everybody here wrapped their spray paint or markers. Everybody here, except our good friend, Mr. Diaz here, is from the Bronx. How many other females did you know that were writing during that time? <laughs> S. Pat 169. Yeah. I took on her first layup. Barbara, Eva, and yeah. Michelle 62. Because everybody forgets Michelle. Michelle yeah. Um, tonic H2O. Oh, wow. That was Sylvia. That was your classmate? That was my classmate. Okay. <laughs> I'm in six in the Bronx. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Those women were doing the damn thing. Did you ride on trains? Hell yeah. On the outside of trains? Outside and inside. Buses. Buses. Very good. All right. Trucks so. Cars. No, I didn't do cars. I, didn't do cars. I, didn't do cars. I wouldn't violate somebody's personal car. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. That's, right. That's, That's something right. I just right. wouldn't do. That's for vandals. Yeah. Anyway, that's for this <laughs> Very good. Thank you, did it. Who were the people that you used to tag with? Name some names. Ray right. B954. Ray B954. Lionel 168. Lionel 168. Phase two. Phase two. Uh, come on. Super cool. Super cool 223. Let's start with that guy. 
Uh, right? Yeah, Wendell. Right. You yeah. had a a, a, a a unique relationship with Super Cool 223, yes, right? Ooh. Right? You just saying I ain't had one with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you had unique. I remember that, right? <laughs> uh, Super Cool 223, right? Yes. Um, um, so, do you remember that when we used to tag on the outside of uh, the panel of, of, of subway cars, and it was mainly a signature tag? You know what? Is, everybody know what a signature tag is, right? Um, right. So, right. So, who, who do you remember did an outline and a fill in of their tag? No, no, that. Who did that, Charmin? Damn. Who? Damn, I'm having. If you don't remember, just say you don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, very good. Okay. I know that. Okay. Riff 170. The first, the first outline filling piece was super cool and Charmin 65. That's who I see. Okay. Damn. Okay. Did you say the top of the train or no? I'm saying side panel, window down, outline, fill it. I can't remember that. Maybe you can. I can't. Do you remember? Uh, the earliest. The, the earliest I seen, the first name I seen with, with a chip on with polka dots and candy canes, you know, like was uh, Jake one, Jake 130 on yeah, the 30th yeah, yeah. On the number two and yeah. five. I'd have to say, uh, oh, that's hard. Like maybe, uh, oh man, Lionel, now, right now one sixty eight. Yeah, what's mm -hmm. one? You had a Charmin sixty five on a red bird. You don't on remember? Red bird, right? so, I remember yeah, I don't on a red know. bird. I had seen that. That was with the Jip on cap. Jip on cap, yeah. no dots in that one. And then I remember a stay high top to bottom whole car, a Jeff I remember that. With a thin outline, okay. With that sweet cruise one forty nine. Yes. I can. You had a little walk. You had all these one purple one haze. Once you did, used to make these top to bottom with Jif on. Well, tell us what the Jif on cast is. For those that know. Okay, so I mean, everybody knows. Okay, let's 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 go right with Jake one thirty. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm more I'm more in 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 the line with Charmin here. Me and her are basically the same age. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like late sixties, I used to tag around in my neighborhood on the street before I actually got on some subway cars. Um, me personally, the outline, outline, font, filling that I first saw, me personally, uh, was super cool two twenty three. I'm sure of that me. And some people say Hondo, Hondo one, right? Um, I, I seen him too, right? I, just letting you guys know that where a lot of this stuff comes from, it's good to understand where a lot of this stuff comes from. My brain is coming. Why were you writing? Why? I was writing because they closed the after school study programs in our neighborhood, and. Uh, Chris and Bonanza liked in my handwriting, which I was doing in school, that when I was doing homework in the schoolyard, and they was like, yo, you got a nice handwriting. You should come with us motion tag. I said, motion what? <laughs> <laughs> Explain motion tagging. Motion tagging is where you get on the train, and the train is moving, and you get up and start tagging. <laughs> While That's people so or whoever's in there, mm. you just start tagging. The interior or exterior? Interior. You never motion tag on the exterior? No, because you kill yourself trying to move <laughs> tag on the exterior. Because the train is moving. Have you ever motion tag? Yes. Interior, <laughs> exterior. Outside. You know who I learned it from? <laughs> <laughs> one day I was coming from Washington Heights. That's why I knew a lot. And I got to be kind on one. Kind on one. You should write so I used to see him. So one day he got on the side of the train oh. and he was right as it was moving. I said, shit, I can do this, and I did it too. And that's how I did it. And then motion tag when the train was moving, you know? Motion tag, you ever did that? Yeah, when you draw him off, but the train went too fast. <laughs> Outside. Outside. Did you have a motion tag? No. Now, when you say motion tag, you mean hanging on to the train, train or just. No, right 
No, no, right I'm, I'm, right right with the I'm going to explain motion tagging. Yeah, yeah, motion yeah, tagging yeah, yeah. is writing yeah. your name yeah. either on the exterior of the train or the interior of the train while it yeah. is yeah. in yeah. transit. Yeah. Um, so Prospect Avenue, where the two and the five uh, train comes in, in the Bronx, here, here in the Bronx. The two and the five stops at Prospect Avenue. Um, so I used to stand on Prospect Avenue, elevated uh, station, and when the train pulled in, very quickly I would take either a marker or a can of spray paint and write my tag Why the train was in the station, and they'd pull out with my tag on the outside of the train. That's before that we had large scale fonts and fillings. Were you a part of a crew in the 70s? Yeah. What crew was you part of in the 70s? Sure, you was part of our own crew. The what part, what crew, crew was that? Whole Avenue crew. <laughs> <laughs> the who who, who, was, the who was in that crew? The wrecking crew. Who was in that Me, crew? Me, Ray B954, Apple 4. KG-135, um, Sugar Honey Iced Tea, uh... Lionel. Oh, I said Lionel, Whip Wop. Whip Wop was in it. Clown, what about Hex Cloud 135. Was Hex 6 down with you? Hex 6, another toy. He was yeah. a toy. <laughs> 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 well, you know, all time, all time, all time people know that name. He, he was a Oh, Pearl, Pearl 149. Pearl 149. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Did you have a motion yeah, tag? All the time. Huh? All the time. Where did you motion tag at? Um, uh, on the, uh, mostly the BMTs, but on the 6th train. What is yes. the BMTs? The BMTs were all, all the, the all, all the letter trains that went to Brooklyn and into Broadway line. Uh, the N, uh, the J train, the... Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Lower Manhattan. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So, um, did you consider yourself an artist when you was writing in the seventies? No, not when I began. It was just slop. Did you consider yourself an artist when you was writing in the seventies? Yes, I did. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I'm talking about in the beginning, like the first year, too. Yeah. Why did you consider yourself an artist? Because I wanted to do more than one style and one name. So Hayes was like, oh, that's interesting. He said, yo, you got something going. And I was always trying to do the best I could do when I set out to do what I did. So you always considered writing as art? Yes, I did. Did you always consider right? Were you? Did you well, consider I, yourself an artist in the well, beginning? I, first of all, I, I, as everybody knows, I can't be for crowd. But, <laughs> but I, I want to say one thing. What I was going to do, when I did tag, I said to myself, I'm going to be better than everybody. I'm going to be everywhere. I'm going to do this net. And, and I think I accomplished it. That's, that's my you. thing. No, but, but that, was, no, but that was my thing. I was, no, excuse me. I was a uh, uh, old time writer, meaning. I wasn't into pieces, but when I wrote, there was no thing as a piece. Right. We just tagged. And that's just like. Well, and why was you tagging? Huh? Why were you tagging? Oh, because I want to get it up. <laughs> get up. And then you know what's the cool thing? When you first see your name on TV and the paper. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes. the time. Yeah. Right. Did you consider yourself an artist when he was writing? No, I didn't think about it. I'm just bullshit. When, when I, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But but I, like I said, I'm I'm like touching, touching the, the the first generation. You know, like the last stages of the first generation. And you know, I come between tags and lettering and bubble letters and uh, drips. I come from drips, dots, lines. Why were you writing? Because I wanted to be like one of the best, you know, I've been, who I learned from, you know, I just wanted to be like as good as who I learned from. And that was like mostly like Riff and Faze, Butch, who was back there and Bach, Bach. <laughs> <laughs> Did you consider yourself an artist when you was writing? 
Did you consider yourself an artist when you was writing? No, I am an artist. I am an artist. Oh, I've right. always been an artist since I was a little kid. But when you we were doing graffiti, it was more like a sport. It had nothing. As a matter of fact, I got kicked out of high school wanting design for doing so much graffiti. Mm. So it didn't really really <laughs> fall into that category. Oh, okay, oh, wow. so okay, so I'm gonna have to make some uh, except our good friend here, Rip, right? Riff, obviously, in the beginning, you looked at writing as as art. Yes. Okay. Uh, the majority of the writings here didn't didn't see it that way. Okay. I'm just saying that. All right. The reason, but let me explain. Okay, the reason, explain the reason is because uh, we wanted to make it as uh, legible. You and you say we it. or you? <laughs> we <laughs> face. We wanted to do the okay. best things we could do and give people something that I can. do. And that's what I did, because a lot of people picked up techniques from me and Faze, which is true. Even you know that. You know, it's just something that I wanted to do. My mother always said, when you do do something, put your best foot forward, and that's what I did. You know, I put my best foot forward, tried to do the best work I could possibly do at all times. And I think I achieved that. If I didn't ask around the room, and we'll see if that's so. Even yourself. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. But they, you have to. Uh, they have to understand. Graph, uh, writing is two things. You had those that did feats, and then you had those that did art. Like what he was explaining before. Like you know, he wanted to get around and get around. Give me around. an example a, of, that's of each feats. one. A writer that did the two different things. One writer that did one thing, and one writer that did another. Well, they, 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 they from write, the seventies. They right, they right next to me. Like when I came around, like mostly they were like King, okay. him and Clyde, uh, FPT and Clyde. They were like kings of, of the ones and threes when I was coming around. You know when I was hanging in Broadway, they like took over Broadway with silver and blacks. You know that. You know, when that you say was, took over, tagging, what, uh, getting up, took, get, getting up. Okay, you know, they were pretty much. Uh, Kings at that time, you know. Um, not not up, so like much like art focus, but getting up. Three, just getting yes. up. So Give me an example so of an artist. Well, please, well, please, well, please, that was a writer. Please, when you explain that, I mean, well, for me and Clyde, Broadway, <laughs> Broadway <laughs> writers are theirs first, but we just happened to borrow it for a time, like. And that's JK. Yeah. No, but when so, I came up with I remember I'm second generation. I, I ain't trying to this is their life. impede on that. <laughs> <laughs> he just came to visit. You know? <laughs> 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 we didn't say we didn't say the king. Yeah. Okay, right. let's not forget Clyde was a bus king. Yeah. Oh, oh, was I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad said that too. Yeah, uh, but that's a feat. Only you know, like no was doing feats. Like getting up and getting around. Those were feats. But we were writers. Yeah. But when, but when, when, like, when Riff came around, I mean, but when you came around and doing characters and all that, a lot of that changed. Okay, very good. So, okay, so now we're gonna get to the um, the uh, controversial stuff. Here we go. There we go. Were you a member of something called UGA? Yes. Yes. What does UGA stand for? United Graffiti Artists. Did you consider yourself a graffiti artist? No, I consider myself an artist, but not the G word. But not the G word. So why did you join UGA? I didn't join. They accepted me in. I didn't go in and join. They asked a uh, phase to bring me there, and he brought me there. Did someone tell you? in UGA that if you are part of this that you couldn't tag no more. Yes, they said uh, uh okay. when did you, you accept that? No I did. Were you a part of UGA? Yes sir. Why? Because they was giving away free spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> Hugo Martinez was Hugo Martinez a writer? No, no. How did he become part of that? He just came looking for us. College he was a junior at college. So he came to use a part of his college feces to get us off the street. And he came to June Park on 73rd, Fort Washington, met Henry, 161. Henry brought us to us. He met us. Then we told him Stitch and Snake and Cat and Web 2. And then we all got together, went to his house on 89th and Riverside. And we held a meeting down there in the house. West, West End, End, West End, West End. Okay, yeah, so, um, building 320, yeah. first floor. 
Oh, who yeah. told me that he started uh, UGA? You want to say something? Yeah. Uh, 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 the first uh, first time I heard at the UGA or seen or anything was a canvas. You know, that Henry 161, Cat 87, Mike 171, SJK. It was a gigantic canvas. And Hugo Martinez, I think, let the Coco 144. Sure. Correct. Sure. 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 And I think Coco 144 was on there. Tan, yeah, Tan 144. But the Coco thing is, Red. I think that Hugo Martinez, I don't know if he gave them the canvas to do the names. He just helped us get to the next that's, yeah. step. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's it was all Broadway by this. Okay. And I love that camp. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's here's the, the thing. Right? Here's the thing. Oh, yeah. right? um, I'm, I'm just telling you what I remember from uh, first hearing of something called UGA. Uh, um, and my understanding was that this guy, Hugo Martinez, was the one that was running it. And as a, 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 a prerequisite to be a part of that, uh, you was... Um, uh, expected not to tag illegally anymore. So, um, he never heard that. He never told me that. He never told me that. He told me that. He never 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 told me that. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons. He never told that to me already. Okay. He was still fucking up the train. Okay, good. Okay. So, um, he told me that recently on the phone that, um, he had to tell everybody. Um, I guess he was getting money um, from um, the city, right? He was getting money from the city um, um, to um, to finance the organization and the markets and the paint and stuff like he still, said he was getting free, still, still right? Still right? Right. And um, he said he told me that that uh, that he could not have people who were vandalizing. Um, Subway cars as part in the organization that he told me personally, right? right? That's what he told me personally. He also told me that he had sent somebody to um, to look for me to be a part of it, but uh, they came back and told him that uh, I said that I didn't know who he was and he was not a writer and that uh, uh, no members of the Ebony Dukes are, 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 are allowed to... Uh, be a part of that because we don't even know if you're a cop right. or anything. Who are you? And back then, we don't know that he could have been a child molester. Mm -hmm. we, was, uh, we was like under 16 years old. Mm -hmm. um, uh, why were we under 16 years old? My understanding, right? Um, during the uh, uh, early 70s, if he was under 16 years old, he was considered a minor. Right? So if you got busted tagging, right, you really didn't really get into too much trouble. Right? And, and under 16 years old, they would not take you to Rackets Island. No, they would beat you up. They would take you to Rackets Island. And back then, you wanted, you wanted to avoid Rackets Island. Right? So 16 years of age was basically the retirement age for most writers back then. So 16 was the retirement age for most writers back then. Yeah. Under 16, you, you try to avoid writing after 16 back then because uh, you get some handcuffs if you got busted and you could get because you, you become, yeah. So that's, that was one of the main reasons. So basically, a, a, a child inspired movement mm -hmm. from the late 60s, early 70s. That must have never grown up then. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, it happened, so yes. You want to say something? Yeah, right? It was a culture started by kids, for kids, and for right. future generations, yeah, why okay. we are here today. Correct. We yeah. saw the kids with right. ourselves. Okay. You know? So we right. want the past and the future to the present. Here we are. But the general, general age area for the first generation was what? 11, 12, to the 4th, 11, 12, 13. Right. Fuzz was 9 years old in the foyer. I was with Hondo when I was with him. Right. 9 years old. Little kid was 9 years old. All right. Yeah. So, um, 
You got writers that are 40, 50, 60 years old now. <laughs> right? So I'm just letting you know, right, that the original writers in New York City, right, were basically juveniles. Not even juveniles, like, like three adolescents, really. All right? Um, comment. Don't ask me that question. I know you're going to ask You said it on the phone. Don't, right. do, don't do it. How many pieces did you do? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. Gonna, Somebody told me you did 5,000 pieces. Straight to the point. How many you did? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, be honest man. with you. A thousand? Hold on. Wait, let, me, let me speak. Drop in the bucket. Not to brag. <laughs> so, I started in 1971. You throw this question. I'm not gonna say anything. I started in 71. I ended in 82. I went away. And so you got so now you got home. You got 1971 to 82. That's 11 years right there. Went away for four years. Came out at the age of 27. Mm. Went back on the two and five train. Damn. How many years is that? A That's time. a long time. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, whoever said 5,000. Yeah, I made over 5,000. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, who I'm, I'm not saying 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 I'm not Riff, you, you quit that. <laughs> I went from the beginning, from Candy Cane all the way to the end, to where you can't even read it on the train. Right. Yeah. You know, all this shit. I went through, like, generations of the beginning, the middle, and towards the end, the 80s, and they still wrote. So I've seen, I, I seen not to brag, I don't like, I'm a humble guy, but I've seen those generations. Okay. And they didn't only hit the two and five, they hit the Broadway once in a while. I hit, uh, we was talking about AFX too, when I was uh, 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 the Chinese guy here, I was out there. <laughs> the, the, the Cliff brought me out to the LLs. Yeah, I, I've been around. But to say that I got 5,000 pieces, I'm going to stick to my guns. And people might think it's insane, but I was on that train in them tunnels every freaking day for years. Yeah. It was like a job. Yeah. But I was doing right. something wrong, but it was a job. <laughs> Went to work every day. I had no life. All I did was rob. Steal, beat up people, got my ass kicked quite a few times. Why so good looking today? <laughs> the thing is, they're molding my face like clay, but that's it is what it is. And if they don't believe me, I mean, I, I have nothing I can do. And then I'm being honest with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. He's saying, he's saying, no, but he's he's the first, first one I met him, he said, well, what well, I met you is like, well, no, you see those? You see those? No, the, the, the trains, the, 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 the ones that's covered in things. Every one that I'm going by, it's got a comment underneath one of them. <laughs> That's what you said to me. <laughs> let me let me ask you this, uh, Riff 170. Um, how do you define style? Style is something that people that is so unique that people take a look at it and go, "What the?" And um, that's what style is. It's very unique. It's very beautiful and it's very attracting to people because. They trying to understand what it is because it's so different. Okay, so um, would you consider yourself a, a pioneer of style writing? Yes, I would. Why? Because I started something very unique that a lot of people <sighs> caught on to. What is that? That was chips, uh, bars, and different angles of the piece. It wasn't called chips. They were called chips. Let them speak. 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 I made them, so why wouldn't I know what they're called? Let them speak. 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 I need, I need to help them de define what style is. Yeah. Put them in the corner. Hey, you call it style nine. Thank you. Define what style is. Style is something that uh, not everybody could do. It's it's a it's like an acquired taste. You know, you either you have it or you don't. And a lot of guys didn't have it, and very few did. Okay, so uh, are you referring to letter fonts? Yes, to letter lettering technique. <clears throat> Your lettering technique. Okay. But some so, guys were taught by yeah. uh, certain uh, yes. like different other artists. I know Faze taught a few so. artists. How to do certain styles. Yeah. 
I said, who they went to him for that? Is that something that you you established, or was somebody inspired you to do that? No, that was something I established. So you, you believe that you're the pioneer of style? Sort of. If Lionel sort of, or did you inspire <laughs> and, and pioneer style writing? Yeah, I pioneered style writing okay. because it rubbed off on other people yeah, like sure. Faith okay. because Faith was doing softies when I was doing hard that edges. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, style writing, right? Um, you say you're second generation. That's what you say, right? Define style writing. Well, when we came around, it was uh, like in the second generation, it was called mechanical letters. Okay, you had mechanical letters, mechanical style, the hard style that he was talking about. Okay. Uh, Faze, back in the days, he had these, the, the soft bubble style, and, uh, you know, Comet had the soft bubble style, the bubble styles that you, um, uh, the, so, the letters were just so rounded off, you know, and uh, you had little shines in them, and uh, they were just easy to do. You just, you know, you could just put a, you can just throw it up quickly. Now, Riff had that hard style that, you know, this is where what everybody was saying, like, it was mechanical letters, and uh, the best guys, you know, and back then had, like, the best designs, the best um, uh, colors, you know, like, uh, the, the best guys that, you know, you could, you could, uh, uh, the best letters, the guys that you can define with the best letters was guys like, like Riff, uh, Faze, uh, Butch, Bot. You know that uh, Billy 167. You know that had these. How about uh, Tracy 168? Oh, I ain't, I'm getting to Tracy. Tracy. Uh, had, like, <laughs> no, no. You you mess around. You got the Tracy. Tracy had this thing that he did with Sonny. It was called the. Uh, you know we always have these different names that we do. Uh, Sonny 107 did a man two piece, and uh, Tracy did like a, a just as regular 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 Tracy piece. I was walking up uh, uh, on my block on uh, East Tremont, and we had this train that the train comes around the curve, you know, and usually like the sparks, you know, under the train, you know, like spark up, you know, when the train goes around that curve. And the man, too, and Tracy was coming up around that curve. It was like a, like a, a damp day. And the train sparked, and Tracy had these bricks that he had, and, and, they, and they were in silver. And it sounded like a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got to give me that look. Yeah, he was, yeah you know when he bite your eyes. But I'm coming up the block, and the and, and as the train is coming around, the sparks lit up, and the bricks, all the bricks that were in silver, just lit up and things, man, just for a quick second and things. I was like. Dang. <laughs> I gotta bite that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, character pieces. Characters. Drawing with the yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. When did you first see that? I first saw it. Tracy, Cliff. You know, when they did the thing and the, and the Hulk. And my boy Chrome 100 when he did the Rolling Stone lip. Who was? Mm -hmm. Hey, he asked me my opinion. I'm gonna tell him. Yeah, I know I speak. Me. Speak. I ain't gonna give me no bullshit. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Yeah. Those were the ones I really first saw first. I saw your things. With due respect, I saw them. But I just, you know, my memory's not the same. But I do remember the thing. But I'm talking about the, like the ones that gravitated me was the Hulk, the thing, you know, those things, those big ones. That's where you're wrong. Drawing with the can, yeah, characters. What do you what do you remember first seeing that? I seen you do it when you did the right. uh, the, uh, the stick man with the cannon. Then you did the Grim Reaper, and then I did like the profile face, and then I did a, a man with the cannon blowing out of like a modern day cannon, which I adapted from you. Drawing with the spray can, actually drawing with the spray can. When did you first see that? What and around what time? I don't understand what you're talking about. Uh, drawing with this a, 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 a character, character. Oh, that's easy on the two. Well, that's what I see. I see. Uh, I used to see. I think it was 
purple haze or phase two used to make these faces with an afro. Mm -hmm. Profiles. Mm -hmm. Profile. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those were faces. Well, but the first <laughs> drawing I see was the cannonball, which yeah. you did for me recently. We did a two man cloud on the canvas. You did the cannonball, and then came the grim the grim reaper. But like I said before, before you did that, phase two or purple haze, I can't remember, used to have those the guys with the outright, those yeah. the outlines. Well, that's that. that was before your drawing. The before your, your character. Yes. So um, um so um can control. Can control is generally known as the technique of using spray paint, right, to write and draw with. Because uh, uh, if you missed my opening, spray paint was invented in 1949 in Illinois. It came on the market in the early 50s. It was not made for a drawing or, 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 or a writing tool. It was made as a utility tool to paint cars, uh, uh, lawn furniture, industrial use. Nothing to do with drawing and writing with. That was invented basically, I would say, mainly by kids under the age of 16 in the Bronx specifically. Um, Philadelphia. Right, so um, cornbread. When's the first time you heard about cornbread? That's first time. Yeah. In that <laughs> magazine, in that magazine, 1973. 1973. The magazine. Yeah. When's the first time you heard about Tacky 183? Well, they said that when I first came to Washington Heights, my boy Marty, Marty Herbert. What year? Not the, oh, oh the, 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 it was like 71 and all that. Yeah. But when I went to Washington Heights for the first time to see Taki's name, it wasn't just Taki's name, to see all these Broadway tags over 190th Street Station, 181st. Hey, you know what I like about you guys? You had those elevators that would go up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, just, I like talking about my history. I know you're talking about your, but the first graffiti writer I ever met from Broadway. There was a guy called Little Caesar, 196204. I'm like, when I, yep. And then when I went to write on the wall, uh, do you remember these names? I'm uh, Nelson 159. Mm -hmm. Hey, yes. girl, see, okay. a lot of these guys don't know these tags. I, I remember that. Yeah, oh, see, but I just want to bring that up, you know what I mean? Because I like what you're saying. I like the way you're talking, but I, I want to hear history. I want to hear, you know, because, again, I'm a tagger, guys. I don't know pieces. I don't know that. Yeah, I know tagging. Right. Yeah. That's all I know. All right. So I, when you're talking about pieces, I can't answer that. FGT. Right. The tags. I okay. So, but uh, okay. So, cornbread. Right. When's the first time you heard about cornbread? The first time. But did he inspire you to write? No. 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 Okay. 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 Did 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 tacky one eighty three inspire you to write? Uh, not really. Not really. No. Uh, Julio two hundred four inspired me. No. Tacky 183. Did he inspire you to write? Oh, well, I know he's from the Broadway line. I go yeah, see him yeah. once in a while. It's, it's the like truth him. from my perspective. Tacky 183. Did he inspire you to write? Absolutely. Yes. He inspired you to write. All the guys. Okay. okay. The Tacky 183. Did he inspire you to write? No. Did Cornbread inspire you to write? No. All right. I, I just want to. Okay. So we got people from the 70s. All people here from the 70s. Late 60s and early 70s. Um. One person here said that that uh, he was inspired by Tacky 183. Yeah. And the rest, including myself, I'm going to tell you, I never saw a Tacky 183 tag in the Bronx. Never. On the east side. Never. The east side. He's from the west side. All right. And, and I never saw it. From the west side. God bless Tacky. Fantastic individual. Yes, he is. I never saw a Tacky 183 tag on a train. Never. On the on the subway stations, yes. Never on the train. On the inside. I never saw one on the inside. Me personally. You saw a taxi 183 tags on the inside. Okay, what year was that? 69. 69. Okay, thank you. Where did you see mostly your tacky one? This is Mike 171, by the way. You saw you saw them where? Okay, on the streets. On the streets. Very good. All right, so um, I'm just saying this because we're trying to we're trying to rectify some history here. Um, 
Uh, Tacky 183 spawns pen pal. Anybody ever read that article? Yes. Yes. All right, now that's generally used as the catalyst or the springboard for writing, the writing movement. All these people here are either from the early 70s or late 60s. Only one person said that they was inspired by Tacky 183. Anybody was inspired by Cornbread? No. 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 Who? <laughs> okay, so this is a now, 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 we're not taking anything from Tacky 183. I'm just telling you, these are your pioneers right here behind you, right? I'm just saying that generally the history goes that Tacky 183 spawned pen pals, meaning writers. He inspired people to write. And only one person said, why was you inspired by Tacky? Because he, he was a, a, a great street tagger, and he he, uh, he started in 1969, and he's an early New York. He's not the first. It's, it, it's very clear that Julio 204 was the first visible yes. graffiti artist in Upper Manhattan. Taki never claimed to be the first writer. He never says he's the inventor of graffiti. He never says he's an artist. He's a humble cat who inspired a lot of street writers. And and basically, if you were, if you were writing back in the day, you were tagging a lamppost, and so, uh, phone booths, buses, yeah. and trains, yeah. and buildings, and, and anything yeah. 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 that was, that was up gate back. And he, Ta Taki was, was like, he, motherfucker could write while he's waiting for the light to change. But he was, <laughs> you know, but it just happened that he was the, the lucky one. He, that exactly. got, he was yeah. the lucky yeah. one Precisely. that got the, the first Same. show, the first in article in, 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 in mass in media the, that talks about the TV being a phenomenon, he happened to be that yeah. lucky guy. He just happened to be okay. that guy. I'm just saying that generally, the, the general writing movement history is presented that Tacky spawned pinballs. One minute, please. Uh, Bot 707, stand up, please. Okay, let him speak. The first guys Stand I up, seen, please. The first guys I seen in the street was Johnny 800 and yes, Yeah, for the age right. 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 I used to right. see that right. everywhere. How about Tacky 183? Did he inspire you? I never saw Tacky 183 when I was writing. Because I'm from the Bronx. I saw a Keith 150 and Johnny 800 yeah. everywhere. Hey, wait, 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 from our Upper East Side people, we got Mike 171 here, SKK 171, all right, all right. Uh, who else is from the upper east side here? Rocky 184, right? Uh, generally, 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 these people are considered the springboard, the springboard for the writing movement, right? The first basically documented people along with Tacky 183. Uh, you take nothing from them as far as uh, pioneering uh, 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 graph writing in, in, in New York City, right? Uh, this this big controversy with uh Philadelphia with cornbread. Let's say this. Let's say this. No, let's no, say no, no, no. Stand. Hold up. Yeah. We gonna clear the air right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Philadelphia did not start this shit. Not at all. They did not. Cause when I used to go with me, my mother and Raby's mother were bingo fanatics, mm. and they used to go to Philly. To play the big round robin for five grand, and we would say, Oh, ma, I want to go play bingo too. We would get there and we'd be tagging and tagging and tagging, and we didn't see no damn cornbread Thank nowhere <laughs> in Philly. <laughs> in Philly, and we used to go often because my mother and Raby's mother were like crackheads. Okay, uh, 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 hey, hey, very good, very good, very good, Char charming. Thank you. Um, anybody, anybody here on the panel? On the panel, heard of uh, TC one twenty six? Of course. Okay, okay. So I got the middle. Okay, so what do you know about TC one twenty six? All I know when I met him, he was a tough character. And I did meet him. Okay. Okay. So it's it's been said that uh, Pop Cat 
Right now, it's been, it's been, okay, very good. It's been, it's been, see that? Hold that up for a minute. That particular way of writing, right, his tag is said to have been uh, um, uh, um, inspired by Philadelphia. Right? So was Top Cat writing when you was writing? Yeah, we met him on the 125th. He was writing? You remember Top Cat 126, right? Uh, okay, so he was inspired by Philadelphia. Uh, what what you Philadelphia a uh, 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 style is, is something called Wickets. Yeah. Anybody know what Wickets are? No, no, what's that? Wiggly letters? Wickets, right? Long. They're, they're long, elongated tags. Uh, so you long write them straight, like, yeah, vertically. They write not across, not across, but vertically, up and down, real long tags, similar to what you are. Uh, we just seen right there with Top Cat 126 tag. So now, uh, he was inspired by Philadelphia. Um, Cornbread doesn't write like that. Cornbread's tags don't look like that, right? Um, I'm just saying the general, the general, the general uh, um, uh, information that's put out is that uh, by Cornbread is that he started in 1965. Okay. All right, that's what he says. All right. All right. So um. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to all of you. <clears throat> it really is, is, is no argument with it. No argument with it. It doesn't take anything from, uh, from New York, no. I, I believe. It takes nothing from us, right? Uh, from what I hear, we did the first pieces. Yes. We did the first stylistic yeah. uh, letters. We did the first characters. Yes. We did the first top. What is the top to bottom? Top the bottom is from the top of the train to the bottom. <laughs> cloud is when you do your name and you do a cloud around me. You know, always somebody you do a nice Generally, you three Ds and your character. You know, we, we invented it. We invented it. And you're holding all the lines. 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 You're one day I was on the floor line and I seen a whole car wasp. And I got it on video on the YouTube. It was a whole car wasp. So I come back home and I say, Blaine, I seen a beautiful wasp. It was a whole car. It was just really like, mm -hmm. and, he, and I says, let's do something like that. So we made square letters and I named, I called it the Blockbuster. He took that and ran with it till the day he. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he you know, he's a movie star anyway. I'm sorry. I love him with my heart, but he's a movie star. And uh, it, we, he did that to the end. He did it good, man. He mm. blasted the four line at the end. You know, he moved over. I moved to Castle. I was hitting the, the, the six train with scene for a while. Then I had it all the way. You know, so th that's that's how we invented the block. It's in the book. I got the book right here. Gigantic book like this. <laughs> Just history of me and Blake. All right. Yeah, um, books. You bought up books. Huh? <laughs> you bought up books. You just mentioned books, right? Yeah. Right. Are you in any books? I'm in a lot of books. Right? For many reasons. For many reasons. Yeah, that's something to say on that. Very good. So again, um, Al Diaz, he writes Bomb One. You started again when? 71. 1971. Lower East Side. Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. Hell yes. Jean Michael Basquiat. Jean Michel. Jean Michel. You have to say Lynch. Jean Michel. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Respect. All right, um, because I, I did a, a, a speaking panel with you down in the um, Tribeca at the One Art Gallery. Yeah. And I told you, I told you, I saw you, I, I saw you and Basquiat as the bridge between basic street tagging and what we now know as street art, right? How did you meet Basquiat? We met in high school after I got after I had well, to high leave, school. After I had to after I had to leave uh, high, high school of art and design in, in seventy six. So you went to art and design for three years, and then I, I redid eleventh grade in at City as a school down in when it was still on Scrimmage Street. One minute, Court please. Street. One minute. Did anybody <laughs> out here go to art school? No. Stupid, right? No, I'm talking about on the panel. Oh, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So you went to art school. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. So I met him at a, uh, 
at another at alternative high school, experimental school in Brooklyn for people that were having a hard time finishing high school. Because I, in my case, it was because of truancy, because of writing graffiti. Um, by then, uh, 76, I already turned 17, and uh, I guess I was starting to age out of graffiti, but it wasn't because I, I didn't want to go to jail or anything. It's because I lost interest in it. In 77, the 76, there was like, by comparison to when we started writing in 70, 71, around then, it seemed like it, like a secret organization, right? Like it was, you were a member of, of a special club, right? We had our own language and all this shit. By 76, everybody in their fucking French bulldog was writing, right? <laughs> so so you got a little boring. So, and that, and then you start, you're 17, you want to you hang out with girls, you want to smoke weed, you, you want to... When you yeah. met Bastion... I was going to ask you, what was her name? That yeah, no, 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 but that's <laughs> what I was going to ask you. That was their name. I knew it was 17. 17. I knew it was a female. You're chasing girls, and you, uh, yeah. so you have no, less no, time no, no. when you, you hang out Bastion. with Bastion. Right here's, the here's the question, here's the question. If you met Bastion, <laughs> he, was he using spray paint? He had nothing to do with graffiti. He didn't come up with I said, what's he using spray paint? <laughs> well, why, why would he if he wasn't a graffiti writer? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that he was not a, a, he, he was not a writer. I mean, writers... He was like a kid. Oh, an artist. He didn't come up with the race. He wasn't, in, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't in the culture of uh, the subculture of graffiti. Not that was so not much. what he was doing. He was an artist. And... and Graffiti was not, he, even later on, you, you see in interviews, he says he doesn't, never identified as a writer. Well, I mean, if you're, if we're writers, you, that comes, that's with you, I'm 64, we, we're all in our 60s, and we still, we still relate to that. Because did you that was introduce some to spray paint? Did I what? Introduce him to spray paint. I certainly did. Because when we started doing the same old thing, which was no longer a tag, that was not just about tagging your name. It was about writing stuff, social commentary. When I met him in the late 70s, whatever. let me say this. When I met him in the late 70s, right, I was working down on Spring Street. Yeah. And I saw him with spray paint. Right. Right? And I wanted to know what his tag was. And he told you that it wasn't a tag. He was writing some yeah. yeah. Right. So he had a clear so idea. So you introduce you said you introduced him to Spray I certainly Paint. did. He was not like I said, he was not a member of, of the graffiti community and didn't identify as that. Yeah. All right, so um, Okay, so thing. later on, um uh, Jean Michael Basquiat meets Andy Warhol. Right? Much later on. Later on. Right? He meets Andy Warhol and Andy Warhol and Andy Warhol the pop artist. And Andy Warhol introduces him to the um the gallery scene down the lower Manhattan. No, that was, he was he was already famous when he started working with with, with, with Warhol. That you was, think so? Was, yeah, absolutely. Okay, no, but, okay, but that's what the, the general so. consensus. I know. So okay, so yeah. the um uh, the general consensus is that is that Warhol introduced them to the gallery. No, it's not true. Okay, it's very good. Okay, so okay, and money and very, very good. Okay, so um, uh, so Bastiat blows up. And he starts to sell his canvases for tens of thousands of dollars. Eventually, yeah. Right. Not overnight. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you met uh, Basquiat, was he drug addicted? We were all drug addicted. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Okay. So um, by the age by the age of 27, 1988, uh, Basquiat uh, uh, is, um, dies from an overdose. Yeah. Age 27. 27. Right. A few years ago, a few years ago, they sold one Bastiat canvas for hundred and ten million dollars. Of which right? he got zero because he's dead. Right? Yeah, he got forty thousand dollars for the eighties. Right. But they resold Let's it for hundred and ten million. So, yeah. They didn't because it didn't belong to them. Okay. It was okay. the collector who sold it. I'm just saying to you, they, they have no they, they can't get get any. All right. Money. Okay. So, okay, cool. all right. I'm just saying to you that. Um, does anybody feel that uh, uh, um, writing or graffiti, whatever you might want to call it, right, is kind of more or less um, consumed by the art world? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the art world loves it. They accepted us about how many years ago? About maybe about 15 years ago? Yep. Right? Well, okay, so, okay, so you was part of UGA, right? I think you was part of UGA. With crash. Uh, you wasn't part of UGA. Who else was part of UGA here? Right. So the premise of UGA 
was that you was going to be introduced to the opera, right? Which we were in 1973 at the Civic Center where we did the Joffrey Ballet here. Yeah. And that right. was the first time we got 3,500 people in black gowns and, and tuxedos. Did you sell a, art? A set standing ovation. There was no art to be stolen there because it was the first time we... we did Snake up. One sell art? They that was at the Reason Gallery. That was, a few months, that was March 26, 1973. <laughs> we came out in the New York Magazine, eight-page layout that explained what we were about with Faze and the, the other guys. Yeah. So that's kind of pushed us to the next level. From, from September uh, 4th to the 10th, 1973, Razor Gallery was Stephen the more part of it. That's where the arts were. Amra was the first one to get a check, him and Miko. Uh, on, on for some, for on your a campus. For, for a spray paint. Yeah, campus. Campus. That was the first time the money, once that dollar bill was exchanged, <coughs> that's why we say we're war writers. It took the innocence and purity out of the graffiti, out of us kids. We're being extorted. The dollar bill changed right. into a business now. Now we're being pimped by Hugo Martinez. Yes, we were. Okay. That's what happened. All right, so that's what we understand. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's JK171. Yes. Did you sell spray paint inspired art yes. in, the, in the 70s? Yes. Okay. I got kicked out because I wouldn't do a canvas for Hugo. Did you sell spray paint no, inspired art for myself? <laughs> okay. He had nothing that I did. Okay, so nothing. So it's Not something that that basically happened in, 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 in the seventies, early seventies. Seventy three. So then that was the first right. time that we saw the painting. Right. The right. Reason, you know, then after when we broke up after seventy five, he took yeah, yeah, yeah. canvases that he had of ours and he he took them to uh, Puerto Rico. He did some shows in Greenpoint, and he he, he posted them online. There's shows that he did them. So he had our canvases there, because my name is in there. Riff's, Riff's name is on the, on the, on the uh, I don't know if you know about that, about the Puerto Rico show. Um, yeah. But there was a few names that, that he had the canvases, and he sold them. So, okay. So um, it's, it's, five, it's 516, right? Um, I'm going to take a few questions from the audience to the panel. Uh, 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 raise your hand. She wants to say something. Yeah, yeah. yes. Thank you. I just wanted to add this little tidbit. I was such mm -hmm. a little naughty girl. When you go kick me out, I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you go said, I'm kicking you out, I got even with it. Yeah. I remember he had this cat. His wife had a cat. Yeah, that cat. And he had that jacket. <laughs> and he had that ugly ass jacket of his. He used to wear the jacket. Yeah, and, and I told Ray B, it's you know blocked for me. And I took the shit out the cat box and I rubbed it all <laughs> in the sleeve. I put all that cat shit in his pocket. And I watched it. She's he's a short of the Okay, so we're good, we're good. All right, you been recording. One more thing, one more issue. Hey, the truth is the light. While we while we with Charmin right here, right? One more issue I want to ask you, right? And we got Rocky over there. Right? You had a boyfriend that was a writer? Ah. You had a boyfriend that was a writer? You're asking too much. I'm asking. <laughs> right? You had a boyfriend that was a writer? Yes. It? Okay, very good. All right. Of course, show. Did you have a, a Rocky 184? Did you have a boyfriend that was a writer? Yes, it's one. Okay, so uh, here's, here's, the, here's the reason. Here's the reason. Here's the, here's the reason that I'm asking you that. Uh, generally, it was seen in the, in, in, the, in, in the early 70s that, and, and I, I mean, that's because, you know, um, you're, you're a little misogynistic back then, right? Um, yeah, guys, but yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. And uh, we didn't think, we didn't hold on now. We didn't think that women, right, was capable of that. Did you write your own tag? I wrote my own shit. Rocky, did you write your own tag? At times. I At times. Snakes, bitch. And Stitch yeah. wrote sometimes for you. Oh, yes. Right? Oh, yes. Did, did, did uh, guys write your tag for you? No. Thank you. Guys treated me like I was one of the guys. The okay. only, only one who showed interest in right. me was Super Cool, was Wendell. Right. He was like, yo, you want to go out? <laughs> did you <write> that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Let, okay. This is to clear that in the air. Because generally, it's, it's, it's seen that. That a uh, female writer, um, back then at least, right? Uh, uh, a male writer 
actually wrote the tag for her. Right? Um, did you ever go to a layup? Hell yeah. Did you go to the train yards? Went to the yards, the layups. I used to go right. on the Okay, I, 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 I'm just going to mention this again, right? Because it's kind of, kind of yeah, set me. I'm, I just kind of set me back a little bit. Tuesday, right? Someone called me on the phone and said, "Oh, um, uh, Channel Seven, they um GMA, um, they have somebody on there that is cons they say is the first lady of graffiti, right? Uh." So I said, hold on. Uh, uh, are shamans on TV? <laughs> and, uh, and he says, I don't know. I said, remember the, the, the uh, when we went to Dr. Soul's uh, funeral? Um, she was sitting right in front of you. Oh, it wasn't her. <laughs> All right? I'm just, that, I, I know, yeah, okay. I, I I'm just saying, right, right that uh, somebody was referred to as the first lady of graffiti on GMA on TV. And, and, and it wasn't even. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm just saying, what we're here doing today, what we're here doing today is kind of more or less fleshing out the history with the people who want to come to the beginning. So this is Patina. This is Dr. Soul's younger sister, right? Okay. Um, so I, I grew up when she was just a little baby, right? And um, I knew Dr. Soul since since since, um, since uh, I was ten years old, right? Um, first group of uh, 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 he was part of the first group of people that was part of the Ebony Do crew, right? Lovely soul, right? And I wanted to do this in memory of him, right? Uh, first generation writer, right? Very humble person, right? He just wanted to get his name up, right? And um, beautiful person. So um, Daniel J. Bontier, uh, Daniel John D J. Bontier was born on January 16, 1958. Baby boomer. Um, all these people here are baby boomers. So if somebody tell you they're a pioneer, you ask them when, uh, how old are they, right? Um, at Lincoln Hospital. Bronx, New York, the Hyacinth, and Galen Bontier. All right? Always a curious and courageous and curious and mischievous child. Back in <laughs> He excelled in graffiti art, creative street art, basketball, and writing. His nickname, his nicknames were Dynamite, Dr. Soul, Mr. Cool, and Danny. All right? And he attended and graduated from R.T. Hudson Elementary School. I went to school with her. Okay? So um, I just wanted to acknowledge her here and Dr. Soul and why he was doing this here today. But mainly, we wanted to document the history, right? Mike 171, uh, 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 Bomb 1, also known as Al Diaz, Comet 1, FDT 56, Chain 3, Charmin 65. You got Olga here, SJK 171, Clyde, Bot 707. Web 169, Andre Trainer, yeah. Butch 2. I want to say something about Andre. Yeah. Oh, man. This guy here is an artist, okay? Yeah. 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 I was driving through 100, 231st Street in Broadway. You got to see what he did for Trace, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right? Yeah. 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 And the first thing I seen what he did was for Case 2. Wow. When this guy do art, uh, it look exactly like the person. I would like him to do something. Yeah, Mad. very good. Uh, Didn't he do uh, the whole uh, Yankee uh, Stadium? Uh, okay. okay, so uh, folks, this guy uh, here, uh, folks, uh, it's kind of it's kind of warm in here, you know, right? So I got these here. I'm gonna give these to Patina. She's gonna hand them out. Who she wants to hand them out to? 